What's going on? Welcome into Fantasy Focus. It is Thursday, Wednesday, 12 6 is in December 6th. I'm Field Yates, and I'm joined by Mike Clay. And before you say anything, Mike, Fantasy Focus Football is presented by Geico. Insurance can be hard. That's why Geico makes it easy with 24 7 claim service and on the go policy info in the app. It's easy to Geico. I nailed that intro right yeah, there. You crushed it. I was going to say we're without Daniel uh, yeah. today. He's not here. So yeah. you put on your Daniel hat and just yes. forgot what day it was. Does Daniel actually wear hats? I'm, as I tweet out the link to our show right now for everybody to come, please join know. us here on YouTube. Does Daniel wear a hat or is he even. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking what kind of hat would he wear? Uh, okay. Probably like the Bruce Arians Kangol hat. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly where my brain went. Really? I'm not even joking. Okay. That's literally Look at where my, my we think alike in so many ways. A beanie, uh, yeah. Beanie uh, would also present. work for you. That would be very <laughs> yeah. that would be very Daniel, very yeah. meta of Daniel. Daniel, hopefully back tomorrow. We'll find out. Yeah. Got a big show today, Mike. We're gonna rank some stuff for week 14. Rank some, what are we gonna rank? We're gonna rank the best holiday albums. Ooh, see, I like that. Okay. Do you have a favorite one? Like off the top? Yeah, I one hundred percent because okay. sometimes it's just something that's like tradition or you know okay. nostalgic yeah. uh, for me it was uh, the elvis presley uh, elvis presley christmas album which we played all the time in december growing up and while we opened our presents it was that in the chipmunks that were those were the two oh I was we always say, played a little as bit kids. of an economy there huh yeah so um, uh so, so yeah so does does elvis is from my that you like elvis it so does not surprise yeah, me that's you're an my old soul you know, uh, you and Jalen are the two oldest souls that I know. <laughs> hey, I'll take that. They talk about like Jalen Hurts he's... in the locker room after a win. Like he'll grab the ox cord and it just like completely changed from whatever <laughs> was actually being played. Jalen's like, no, I got this. And it's like jazz music or something like uh, Jalen's the best. Uh, the actual two best albums with, with all due respect to Elvis and also uh, and the chipmunks, which was a banger growing up when you were a kid. But um, I'll give one that's more mainstream and then one okay. that like you should know and, and people should pay more attention to this artist. Darius Rucker absolutely smashes it. Okay. Great Christmas album. A little country Darius Rucker flair to it. Then Dave Barnes, my guy, Dave Barnes, big fantasy football fan. Absolute incredible voice. I was listening to it on the way in total banger. You're yeah. completely, you no, like, I, I mean, I want to hear it now. Um, yeah. I mean, the only the only like recent song that I love, is, my favorite is Candy Cane Lane. See okay. ya? I love that song. By who? See ya. Oh, by see ya. Is it yeah. see ya? See ya. I don't know. You I, I'm going see ya. I don't we know. Are it's so S-I-A. the wrong people to be talking about like modern pop yeah, culture. Yeah, I mean, with. look, everyone watching this now is like, talk about football, please. Okay, like, just we'll get it. there. Every time, um, every single time. Every yeah, I know. Well, we'll get to it, I suppose. Um, all right. So, do you want to do it then? Football talk. I guess so. All right, we fine. can do that. Um, I will just say before, we, like last thing, is like I, I'm sorry that you did not win Time Person of the Year. Oh, Narrowly man. edged out you know by what? Taylor Swift. Yeah, I mean, I think I made the final like hundred Dude. million. Hundred million. <laughs> yeah, like I was in there. Like I just, I was like nine hundred thousand. I don't know. Yeah, that's a lot of math. But anyway, I was close. You were close. You know, Next year is your year. I'm Next hoping. year is Mike Clay's year to become Time Person of the Year. How do I accomplish that? We need to talk about that's that. Great, we got a workshop you know how, I, how we get there. Um, you're the projector around here. You figure it out. You always look into the future okay. with your projections. Well, no way. Come on. Now, this morning we were texting. You were like, no, you got to project cricket now. Yeah. So it's working on that. How's that going? I already made it. I made a joke in a text to you, like how what the, they score runs and something else, and I already forget. Like, what is it? Run. Wickets, right? Wickets. That's yeah. it. Wickets How many wickets? Cricket. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we're going to do some rankings conversations in uh, just a few moments and also a little bit of news. Um, let's dive into the uh, Jaguars portion of the show, Mike. Yeah, as, how about uh, this? Uh, yeah, I wasn't here yesterday, yeah. so you guys recapped that game. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, crazy one, huh? Yeah, it was. A lot it, of news, too. Uh, so I would say, I, I don't know that it's conflicting information on Trevor Lawrence right now. Mm-hmm. I would say it's more just like lack of clarity. He has a high ankle sprain. That much we know. Whether he misses time, we don't know, Mike. But I would say like the general sense is he could miss at least a week. You have updated your projections. They now include Tuesday Bethard Correct, yes. as opposed to Trevor Lawrence for the Browns, which is not fun. Now they have their backup quarterback. How much of a downgrade is that for the passing game in general? Uh, I think it is. It's a little bit of a downgrade. No, no question about it. Sure. We know Trevor Lawrence is better than yeah. CJ Bethard. That's not a controversial take. Uh, I will say this, though. It's not like they were winning by lighting it up through the air all season, Fair especially thing. in the touchdown department. It, Lawrence is averaging around one passing touchdown per game. So, that gives you some saving grace for the likes of Evan Ingram, who we know scored his first touchdown last week, but has been a really good fantasy uh, player due to his high target share. Calvin Ridley's been boom bust, but certainly remains startable. We'll get to Christian Kirk and, and Zay Jones in a minute. Uh, Travis Etienne, obviously, they've been running the offense through him. He's going to be good to go. Um, I will say this about Beathard. This morning, I was like, you know what? I'm going to look in. On the drive-in? Uh, well, no, this is before the drive-in. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So I was looking at 
the Kyle Shanahan era in yeah. San Francisco and the quarterbacks that played a bulk of the snaps. And there were four quarterbacks with at least 500 pass attempts. It was uh, Jimmy Jimmy Jay Beathard, Jim, Jimmy G, Brock Purdy, and Nick Mullins, Nick Mullins was yeah. the other one. Three of those four yeah. had a completion percentage of at least 65%. That's pretty good, above yeah. average. 7.9 plus yards per pass attempt they average. Okay, that's, that's I'm gonna really go good. With Brock Purdy is being one of those in both of the things that you've mentioned. Sure, so sure. Far. I'll get, yeah. yeah, I'll get to that. And a, and a touchdown percentage of at least 4.2%. So okay. all really good. Yeah. Completion percentage, YBA. Three of the four. Three of the four yeah. accomplished all three of those things. Okay. The one who didn't was CJ Beathard. Beathard. Okay, so he was kind of the exception of the rule yeah. that Shanahan just... Raises the boat. So uh, he had a couple decent games in there, a couple two touchdown games, uh, but his efficiency overall was not what you expect from a Kyle Shanahan uh, quarterback. This is a tough matchup against Cleveland as well. So I would say, yes, I'm lowering my expectations for this passing game. So by the way, I just, uh, we have some time today. So we'll talk through some stuff a little bit uh, in, in greater length than usual. Because this a conversation came up in a group thread that I'm on about Tim Boyle recently. Like, mm-hmm. how is Tim Boyle a starting NFL quarterback when you go back and you look at his college mm-hmm high school pro stats um, in his college career playing at UConn. And I believe central Michigan, one of the one of either central Eastern or Western mm-hmm. Michigan never had a season with more passing touchdowns and interceptions. Unreal. Normally when you're seeing like those quarterbacks that make it from one of those type of schools, it's because they had like, you know, 35 touchdowns and five picks during their final season. Mm-hmm. And I think what it reminds me is that the quarterback room is such an interesting composition in the NFL, right? Because you want a backup who is a great dude who is going to like be as prepared as possible, be an incredible professional, be the kind of person that supports the starting quarterback, but also not be good enough to threaten the starting quarterback, right? Because if you have a quarterback who's your backup, who's almost as good as a starter, the minute the starter starts to struggle, fans and maybe even the Mm -hmm. team starts clamoring for the backup to play. So I've kind of wonder if that's exactly what is happening right now with Tim Boyle, like an all-time good dude. Aaron Rodgers loves him. Keep him around for a while. I wonder if that was like CJ Beathard, who is a really, really good dude. I wonder if part of the reason why Jacksonville has reinvested in him because they signed him this offseason to a new two year deal is like really solid dude. Probably not going to like be the rising tide that floats the boat if we have to play without Trevor Lawrence, but good enough to keep things smooth. And maybe we can win off of the running game and defense going forward. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think as some teams look, uh, we need to reevaluate the back of quarterback spot this off season though. Right. We do. Uh, I, but also I think it's kind of two sides to it, right? Like we're criticizing teams who are not at really addressing that position. But the fact is there's not even enough good starter Starters, quarterbacks, yeah, totally. uh, yeah, let fair. alone backup. So I almost think it's like for some teams, it's just like having a backup kicker throughout the off season. Sure. Like, Baltimore doesn't have two kickers because Tucker's job's in trouble, right? He's there to take some reps away, give yeah. him a break. You know, you, if the, you don't want the starting quarterback taking every rep in practice all week, you need the backup to step in throw some passes, give him a break, right? You need someone there to, that could throw a football, but a lot of teams are like, look, if our starter goes down, we're, we're in trouble. Like we're not, we're, we're, we're You're not totally going to win. Correct. Yeah. There are also quarterbacks that I think are probably more identified as like backup level players right now than starters. Yeah. There's only like a few Gardner them, Minshew yeah. and Josh Dobbs. Yeah. Who this offseason signed for like relative pennies. Mm-hmm. Right. The Gardner Minshew contract with Indianapolis is for like five million dollars max. Like mm-hmm. I don't care if the team goes winless in their last five games. Gardner Minshew has been you know, his wins above replacements been way more than what five million dollars normally buys you at the quarterback spot. I agree. And I guess that's good for maybe a slip into the playoffs and get some extra revenue, but it's not a Super Bowl winning recipe. Whereas that's fine. like Anth- in Anthony Richardson, if he was playing at the level of CJ Stroud, like maybe you're a, a sneaky Super Bowl contender. Okay. Like Houston could make a run with that's the way fine. Stroud's playing. Uh, I think that's a little bit part of the equation why you don't go nuts paying backup quarterbacks. You have to spend on all the other positions. You totally do. I'm just saying if you're one of those teams that actually kind of already has your quarterback plan figured out, as was the case with the Colts, then you should have a backup plan. Like, because like if you're the jets, I guess this one's tricky because Zach Wilson was a second overall pick and made so much money, but it's like, but this was like the old uh remember the old line. I think you might've shared this where someone was asking the Colts. Yeah. Tom Moore line about like, we don't practice bleep if our quarterback gets hurt right like (laughs) i feel like maybe some team should have considered it right like jacoby Brissett would have been a totally serviceable option for somebody who has a young Mm -hmm. quarterback that is the future but if something happens to that young quarterback you have jacoby Brissett waiting in the wings as opposed to tim boyle and trevor simeon and now brett rippon yeah i wonder if some of them guys though uh like Minshew and and Brissett, uh andy dalton like we thought okay i can go somewhere and be obviously like Justin Herbert's backup. I'm yeah. not playing at all. 
or I could go be a bridge quarterback somewhere and get some, actually be able to play maybe, and get the same yeah. amount of money. So maybe you're right. Maybe teams we need to bar, be more aggressive at spending a little bit more on backup quarterbacks instead of just letting these guys be, be bridge quarterbacks yeah. short term. There could be something. I just separate, would say when you have there. an obvious quarterback starter, I think it's important to be more aggressive at investing in that backup quarterback. If there's some ambiguity about what your future looks like, I get not wanting to have a quarterback because you're probably not going to be very good at backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be very good. But anyways, yeah, conversation it's just walking that line too because yeah. you also want to support. You don't want to spend on a back quarterback and not a good receiver for for your starter, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. It's people kinda, are like, listen, we anyway. talked like the Taylor Swift talk was good. This right here too much. Let's move on to Christian. That's Kirk. A, you look, it's our Wednesday show. We yeah, just spend we a little, little, little extra time, a little just a little bit. time, uh, right? We did college prospects last week. It's yeah. fine. You know, uh, Christian Kirk it. is going to have surgery. He's going to miss some time. It's uh, it's a core slash groin area, Mike. So sounds like he'll probably be out for the rest of the regular season, which opens up the possibility to a player that I talked about. Fairly glowingly yesterday, Parker Washington on yeah, the show. Look good. Yeah, it looked really good. Six yeah. round pick out of Penn State. Do mm-hmm. you watch much much Penn State because you're Pennsylvania? Uh, not not really. I, not a, not okay. a ton of college football until the off season. That's when I kind of grind away at it. But okay. I don't have to do that anymore because you're our college guy now. Yeah. So I'm just going to pass the baton on as the usual. To Mike you. just you know passing off work to his yeah. colleagues. But uh, Parker vacation. Washington looks awesome. Looked really good. Six yeah, catches, sixty one yeah. yards and a touchdown. And uh, they they have liked him this entire season, but because of the fact that they have their top three wide receivers penciled in, he hasn't had much of a role. He will have a significant role going forward. Yeah, no doubt. Jumped uh, Tim Jones on the depth chart, clearly yeah. uh, ahead of him in terms of usage in this game. So uh, the expectation here is pretty straightforward. You're going to have Calvin Ridley and Zay Jones on the perimeter. I still think they're your, we're going to talk about Zay Jones shortly, but they're your primary targets from a fantasy perspective. But Parker Washington I scooped him up in waivers in a bunch of leagues. If he yeah. plays the slot the rest of the season, perhaps he sneaks on to uh, the flex radar once Trev- uh, tr- uh, Trevor Lawrence is back. But it's also the excitement of the unknown sometimes with picking up guys off waivers. Yeah, maybe he's just, maybe this is a another you know star late round pick that's going to be a really good slot guy like a Tyler Boyd type for a long time, something along those lines. Just sure. be a, a guy that soaks up a lot of catches, makes some plays. So you never know. So I took a, I took some dart throws. I was actually surprised. I got them in like every league. I put in a bid and I put in a super aggressive bids. I mean, $17 in our dynasty league yeah, was that, more than I was willing yeah, to Yeah, I, I have a lot left. There's only a few weeks left. So okay, that was part gotcha. of it. But yeah. um, other leagues, I That's got a for like five bucks. Mike saying like, I'm so good that I need to spend wow. money during the season. <laughs> Well, he does it. You do have an awesome team. That's that that deepest. I'm coming uh, for you. Watch out. Yeah, we'll playoffs. see. We'll see if we'll see in the away. playoffs. Maybe round two. Maybe. Yeah. Let's say there's a chance. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I think Parker Washington will have a legitimate role. So if you play in like a 14 or 16 team league, or I think a lot of our audience is still hanging around this time of the year is into the dynasty as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're playing dynasty, Parker Washington should be on your radar, at least for the rest of this year. I mentioned yesterday on the show, Calvin Ridley free agent to be after the season. Zay Jones has one year left on his contract. You just never know in the NFL things change so fast. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk some rankings, Mike, and let's start with Jordan Love. And I brought Jordan Love to the table because I was wondering just how high he would climb in our rankings this week. He took care of business against the Chiefs this past Sunday night. One of the most impressive performances, regardless of whether we are talking real or fantasy football, the entire season against the Chiefs, in my opinion. And how high does he climb? I've got him as quarterback nine this week. Uh, I can make the case, but where do you have him this week? Yeah, so only two teams on a buy. So we have the full yep. array of star quarterbacks in our rankings that are healthy anyway. Um, he's 11 for me. Uh, one thing I'll say, it's it's a little tricky with these teams that are bad. You might think Giants, outstanding matchup. They're putting out, he's going to throw four touchdowns. Uh, Giants, kind of mid-pack against quarterbacks. I mean, teams can run the ball as well against them. I mean, if you're, if you're winning the game, you don't have to throw a lot in the second half. Love has taken advantage of some uh shootouts if you will in recent weeks which is going to help boost your stats i think he's going to be a serviceable streaming option uh but remember this is a guy that has yeah six 20 plus point games bookend but they those two uh trios of games bookend seven straight games under 18 points so we've seen the ups and downs from him and also we'll see if he even has christian watson in this game we don't know that he could be a little shorthanded uh luke musgrave still out for them uh, as well, but you know, he's been really good as of late, totally a, a, a fine streamer, but not a guy I'm ranking like top five, top seven yet. I've got him as quarterback nine, as I mentioned, and my biggest fear in this game for Jordan love is that this team can get enough, enough of a lead early where they just run the football and mm-hmm. have a very concentrated plan of running it against a giants team that is really struggling to score right now, or maybe even green Bay picks up a defensive touchdown against the giants. Uh, this, this is a fun fact just to, to, to illustrate how much the giants are struggling right now on offense. How many sacks do you think the commanders have 
since play, uh, since trading away Chase Young and Montez Sweat. How many sacks do they have? I'll say three. Ten. But that was, oh, that was like, a, yeah, that was long. It was a month ago. Yeah. So that makes more sense. However, of those ten sacks, nine came in one game against the Giants. So in the other what? games, besides <laughs> the Giants game, they that's have amazing. one. One in every, uh, you know, I take that back. They have two, they have, um, yeah, that's right. One. And just as a reminder, that one, that one sack, one sack besides the nine against the Giants was against Geno Smith and the Seahawks for zero yards lost. Mm. They sacked him at the line of scrimmage. Like he tried to scramble and was sacked right where the ball was snapped. Yeah. So technically a sack. And that's the only other sack they have besides against the Giants. So the that's Packers unreal. who have much more talent on their defensive front right now than the uh, commanders do should be able to pile up the sacks on Monday night. I said the Giants, the Packers, who I meant. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Packers should have a big night on defense. That's my fear. However, over the past four weeks, just how good has Jordan Love been? Well, over the past four weeks, he has quarterback three in terms of fantasy points. Dak and Brock Purdy, the only two quarterbacks ahead of him. And it's not just like he's doing it fluke in like a fluke way. He's got the second best QBR over the past four mm-hmm. uh, past four weeks. Dak, of course, number one there. But he's third in passing touchdowns, fourth in passing yards. And as we talk about, like, I'm just a believer more and more by the week of what Jordan Love has become. And even if they don't have Christian Watson, we have seen them play for the past couple of weeks without Luke Musgrave. They've got strength in numbers at wide receiver, right? It's mm-hmm. not just Christian Watson. It's Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed. It's Dontavian Wicks now, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're getting guys seemingly out of nowhere to contribute for them in a meaningful way. So I am on the Jordan Love train. Yep, I hear you. I wonder. I'm now. I'm starting to think like, okay, seems like he's a serviceable starter. Yep. Uh, what is the ceiling? Is this a like where where does he fit? I don't know that he's going to be like okay, weighted in line like Aaron Rodgers, and yep. then you know, be like Rodgers did behind Favre, and then became a star. But maybe like a Kirk Cousins, you mm. know, like a uh, Cousins had to wait in line be behind RG three, yeah. but kind of put got an opportunity and looked good and became a a solid high volume passing sort of fringe QB one. And by the way. Kirk Cousins made some uh, produ- uh, had some production with his legs there for a while when he was yeah. in Washington. It hasn't in Minnesota as he's gotten older, but love tenth in rushing yards yep. among quarterbacks as well. So if he lo- if he ends up that going forward, and we rank him like twelfth, eleventh, thirteenth at QB the next few years in our rankings, that's going to be a win for the Packers for sure. I wonder what the Packers front office feels like right now. They got raked through the mud for a while there. What are they doing yeah. in this roster? You know, it's it's all going to fall apart once Aaron Rodgers is traded. Apparently not. This team looking pretty good right yeah, now. Yeah, just good, good job at the front yeah. office. Good, good re- solid yeah. roster construction. Yeah, really. Just young. They just went in on the rebuild. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. And they didn't really do it by just like, un, like uh, dump. You know, d- like uh, dump everyone. Like yeah. go for picks. Like trade all. I tried everyone. They traded for Sol Douglas earlier this year, but it wasn't like a just set it all on fire and start over. No. They just did it kind of smoothly. Added young sp- skill guys the past few years, and it's looking like it's coming around. This is going to be frustrating for some Packers fans because I understand they felt like they left some opportunities in the last three years with Aaron Rodgers. They were in the number one seed in back-to-back seasons, lost in the NFC mm-hmm. Championship. I get all that, all right? But their plan was to always be looking ahead and have the cabinet full so that when you do transition from one quarterback to the next, the next quarterback is going to have some potential playmakers around him and those guys, it took some time, but they're starting to turn things around right mm-hmm. now on offense. Sure. Jake Browning may not be Jordan Love, but he is pretty good. He played How about awesome that game on Monday? Monday night. Unbelievable. Wow. Jake Browning had nearly 27 fantasy points, a top four scoring quarterback for the week. And I was wondering how real is it? I wanted to see where my rank would stack up to yours, Mike. We both have him as quarterback 13, believe it or not. And you're the reason why I'm confident is that. So you're kind of wondering, like, what was the path to get him to that monster week? on Monday night. And when you watched it, I think you got this sense. And then when you look at the numbers that reinforce this sense, it's let Jake Browning be Brock Purdy light. Mm -hmm. Let the playmakers do the heavy lifting here, right? As a matter of fact, there are 44 quarterbacks that have started multiple games this season. Where do you think Jake Browning ranks in terms of air yards per attempt out of those 44? Uh, He, I mean, he was really high in his first game uh, in I don't know. I remember That's, the first game he was really he came high. In, in, in relief duty against yeah. Baltimore. So, so I don't it. know. I don't know. Where, where, yeah. Dead last. He's last now? That By was a big a switch. Over a full then, yeah. yard per attempt. Dead wow. last. Yeah. So as we saw, uh, I, I I understand that Jamar Chase long touchdown notwithstanding. But this that makes was, sense, yeah. That was a actually a really good read by Jake Browning. Like, it was very clear. Mm-hmm. He, had a, he had a very rare 
one-on-one opportunity with Jamar Chase on a three-by-one set where Chase is on the backside by himself. He's got, he has a one-on-one. Mm-hmm. I bet the Bengals have a check in their playbook that just basically says, if it's a three-by-one set or if Jamar is by himself anywhere and you've got man-to-man coverage, whatever, tap your helmet, let him th- run a go-route mm-hmm. and just throw the ball sure, out there, sure. right? Yeah. Besides that, though, it was a lot of stuff at or near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they were like force-feeding bubble screens to Chase in it's the great. first quarter of that it was game. brilliant. Yeah. You love to see it. He had four yeah. catches, did Chase, mm-hmm. on the opening drive. For those reasons, I think it is sustainable going forward, which is why I have missed quarterback 13 this week. Yeah, and he was fourth this past week, also had 22 yards and a touchdown on the ground yeah, as well. Added a little bit of yep. value that way, which yep. we know he has that in his arsenal. Uh, the one drawback I have here, and you know, maybe even I might call him a streamer if not for this, is the matchup. I mean, yeah. over the past one, two months, the Colts defense might be, I'm look, the schedule hasn't been tough, but you can only play who's on your schedule, right? Maybe yeah. the best in terms of uh, slowing opposing quarterbacks. The first three games of the season, they all had 17 plus fantasy points to all three of those quarterbacks. Since then, only one quarterback has reached 17 fantasy points. And that was who 19. Was that? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head who got there, okay. but anyway, it was none have gotten to 20. Wow. So uh, they've been pretty good. They're top five in sacks and interceptions. So they've been getting the job done on that side of the ball. So the matchup, might Second not think sacks. super hard, yep. but the Colts are um, have been really good against quarterbacks. That's my drawback to streaming him this week. Totally. Yep. But, you know, I, that might change next week when the matchup's a little about the Colts as a defense? Could you play them? The Colts as a defense? No, I okay. don't think so. I think the Bengals played well enough in this game. Right. That uh, you and, and you're still facing Mixon and, and Chase and Higgins. Gotcha. Uh yeah, I, I don't know. Are we getting to, we're not talking about Joe Mixon. Maybe we'll get to that later in the we week. What an int- he's an interesting topic because I'll tell you what, after the first quarter of that game, when he was out again, now carried six to one by Chase Brown. I was like, oh, yeah. And he was scoring touchdowns. And I'm still like, is this a committee? The tides but that have went away in the second half. He dominated that uh, the touches in that game. Let's talk to you, Bob and Mike, who, of course, has been uh, busier snaps. for the Panthers of late uh, over the past few weeks, especially. Where do you have him ranked this week? I have Hubbard 24th in my rankings in this one. Uh, He's clearly the lead back, but not Kyron Williams or Christian McCaffrey. Lovely. He's played exactly 64% of the snaps the last two weeks, 19 touches, 91 yards and a touchdown, and then 25 touches, 104 yards and two touchdowns. I will say this, not a guy that's going to get you a lot of touchdowns. He he scored two touchdowns in this game last week. This is the first time he's ever had more than one (laughs) touchdown in a game, had the 25 carries. At zero targets in the game. That's been really inconsistent for him uh, this season. And the Saints, by the way, pretty good, you know, top 10 in fantasy points allowed to running backs in terms of slowing running backs. So uh, not a walk in the park matchup by any means. So I think he's, look, he's a fringe RB2, not super exciting. His ceiling is probably not really what we've seen the past couple of weeks, probably a little lower than that. Yeah. You're going to have some spike games, but he's a boring old solid. Alex Madison right. type of Ooh, fringe RB2. More thoughts on Madison in just a moment here. But yeah. you know, it's funny. He's not like a Christian McCaffrey type in terms of his role. Since week six, he actually has a higher rushing share than Christian McCaffrey does. Mm-hmm. Now, that's, of course, because some, the four Niners are just some trash time in there. Out, yes, and next thing you know, Elijah yeah. Mitchell steps in. And Which, carries. by the way, we're thankful for because if you played the fantasy focus uh, parlay on Friday, yeah. it was 17 and a half for McCaffrey. He was at 17 when they called off the dogs and he rests the rest of the game. So sweating I mean, great one? call by me or lucky call by me. Mix of both. We'll say yeah, but that t- one was lucky. Yeah. That was lucky. That would Tyrion Davis price getting weighed by the four. Nine I thought there would be more uh, about that, but I think, uh, you know, third round pick and he barely made no, an impact. They got to stop spending early that's picks on do, running backs. Right. They just do this. Like it just, again, I, I'm a big believer. Like I don't, um, Obviously, when when a GM is fired, it, it tends to be because there's a series, a long list mm-hmm. of moves that did not work out. But pick, pick name a GM right now, and I will give you their list of bad moves. Like every GM, oh, has of them. course, okay, yeah. like it's yeah. how the world works. Yeah, it's like Patriots are, are great at team building. Wide receiver can't yeah. seem to get it right. Uh, yeah. I mean, any team, just name a GM, and I'll give you five off the top of, of my course, head that I course. can name that have not worked out. Even the best ones, exactly however, right. yeah. yeah. Um, the 49ers are just like the funny ones because they seem to be the same mistake over and over and over again. It's this mid-round running back where Kyle Shanahan could pick a running back off a tree in like the Bay Area. And they're and always reaches into, relative yeah. to expectations. Yeah. Too. And uh, Terry Davis Price, maybe do for the practice squad now. We'll see. Maybe he'll go to uh, Indianapolis and reunite with Trey Sermon. Yeah. Another woe be gone third round pick. Yeah. Uh, if from, any of them worked out, like even like Joe Williams, I think it was a fourth rounder. Like the lit- That was the best one because Joe Williams apparently was off the board. I believe this was chronicled to Peter King. Yes. That he was off the team's board. Mm-hmm. And then Kyle Shanahan was like, I like this kid. He handpicked him. Yep. 
put him on the board. We're taking him in the third round or fourth round. And then he just was cut with him. Yeah. Like and the ones that do work out are like Elijah Mitchell right. and like yeah. Matt Burita. Who yeah. was, I think, well, he was undrafted, right? Seventh do you round think Christian draft? McCaffrey's worked out? I get like, well, again, that's pick, they, but, they, they were just finally yeah. like, we thought they were like, all right, we're done with this. We're just going to trade for one. No, wait, did they draft? They, uh, no, Jordan Mason was undrafted this undrafted, year. Undrafted, yeah. Yep. This, this year last year. Did Michael yeah, so. Hasty undrafted. They yeah. got some running. Those are the ones him. that work out. It's amazing. So. Yeah. Don't draft running backs high, generally speaking. Uh, anyways, we agreed on Chuba Hubbard. He has been busy enough. Back to back games with 20 plus fantasy points. Uh, I'm going to use Roshan Johnson as kind of like a uh, buffer for the entire Bears backfield, Mike, because yes. uh, the last time we saw this team play Monday Night mm-hmm. Football, they ended up getting that win over the Vikings. They have their bye this past week. Now they play this upcoming Sunday against the Lions. Second time in like a month they played Detroit. That's right, yeah. Week it's 11. interesting, though. We don't know who's going to be available. And that when I, when I say that, I mean, like, is Deontay Foreman going to be there? Because I think this is where things get really tricky. Mm-hmm. If it's just Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson, I think I have a pick of those two that I would like to make. But if the third variable here is Deontay Foreman also being available, I think my pick would be I don't want to play any of them. Mm-hmm. Is that where you stand as well? That's exactly where I stand. So right now, all three are projected as playing in yep. this game. Uh, Johnson is highest at 32nd. So yep. that means you avoid this backfield for a lot of reasons. So when we did last see them, uh, Roshan played 75% of the snaps. His prior career high was 45%. So it was a big change. 10 carries, five targets. He was fine. Didn't score a touchdown. It's seven, you know, 75 yards, whatever. He was okay. But was that a game script thing? Like it was a lot of pass blocking. And yep. there was like, is it, we don't want Khalil Herbert in there in that situation. If the game's closer with Detroit, remember they were leading Detroit throughout a lot of that game. Yeah. Is there more Khalil Herbert running the football unless Roshan Johnson? So we don't have the answer to that question. And we also don't know if Deontay Foreman is the lead back here, because remember when Khalil Herbert came back two weeks ago, he played a lot in that game, but Deontay Foreman was the lead back to start the game. He got a bulk of the carries to start that game. Right. And then he left injured and then it became the Khalil Herbert show. And then the next week there was the Roshan Johnson show. So we don't know. And, and honestly, it's probably going to be game script and hot hand related. Um, If Roshan starts, maybe fumbles or starts slow and Foreman has a long run and then everything changes. Sometimes you just have to accept what you don't know and make a decision that way. And that's the situation here in Chicago. I just, unless you're desperate, you have to try to avoid this. It's funny. I could make a plausible case for how any of these guys has the biggest role in this game on Sunday. Like Deontay Foreman might feel like the long shot to some people, but remember Mm. the last time we saw the bears, the Vikings basically said, we are going to dare you to try to throw the football down the field. Yep. And by that, I mean, like, like, you, you, what is your option? And the Bears' only option was just, like, dump it off, dump it off. It was dump off City, remember? Mm-hmm. Uh, until DJ Moore had that 36-yard catch at the end of the game to set up the game-winning field goal. Deontay Foreman at least provides you that power back, that if a team is just basically mucking up the box and you want to just try to run some power power, power run, just whatever, let them do it, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the Bears counterpunch if the Lions try to do what the Vikings did. That was a masterclass by Brian Flores, their defensive mm-hmm. coordinator on that Monday night game. Not enough to win the game, but still, I'll be curious to see if others replicate it. I have Foreman, obviously, I have Roshan Johnson as RB33, but my head is spinning thinking about this backfield. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, when they played Detroit just a few weeks ago, this was week 11, that was yeah. the game Foreman left, yep. uh, left early. The three combined had a uh, 17 fantasy points. Like wow. we, if you're starting a guy, you probably want 13, 14 plus. I mean, they combined for 17. For 17. Yeah. And this is a really good run defense. Three, uh, fourth fewest fantasy points allowed 3.4 yards per carry allowed. That's fourth lowest. They've actually allowed the highest yards per reception to running backs this season, which probably benefits Roshan the most yeah. and reinforces him as our best play here. But again, I, no, thanks. Like, I don't want to touch any of these yeah. guys. Justin Fields carved that Lions defense up the last time we saw them, which, by the That's way, they attacked them right they've now. They've been susceptible to that over the yeah, past Yeah, they're great against the run, but yep. you can throw on them. Yeah. Uh, another one here. We just mentioned the Vikings. Alexander Madison, Mike. I've got him as RB32, and that feels too high to me. Yeah, I'm at, well, I'm at 29. Uh, still the lead back. I know he's been under nine fantasy points, five of his last six. So it's been a little bit of a struggle. Exactly two targets in five straight. So he's not giving you much in that department as well. Um, but this is the saving grace for him as a deep league flex option is that uh, three. It's been three games since Ty Chandler kind of took over for Cam Akers and yep. had a role here uh, comparing the two players. Madison, 105 snaps to 68, 36 carries to 29, 47 routes to 19, six targets to six targets. Chandler actually has eight more fantasy points wow. in those three games. Madison only has a 20 hasn't scored a touchdown. That's why it is a good matchup against the Raiders. Six most fantasy points allowed, but Madison is still, he still has the edge in snaps, carries, and pass routes, and a good matchup. Again, 29th, right? 
We're not going nuts here. This is not a lineup lock by any means. He's going the wrong direction. But uh, if you're in a tough spot and he's been your RB2 all season, you could do worse. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a little bit lower at RB32. And part of the reason why is we talk about all the time how fantasy football is a byproduct of opportunity and talent. The opportunity, as you laid out, is fairly solid for Alexander Madison. I'm just wondering how much he's going to make of these opportunities. Since week seven, there are 48 qualified running backs in the fantasy points per touch metric that we have looked up. Where do you think Alexander Madison ranks out of 48 in terms of fantasy points per touch? And when's it? When, week uh, seven. Week seven. Yeah. Uh, I'll say 45. 47th out of 48 with yeah. 0.58 fantasy points per touch. I feel like you would have a chance to guess who is the only running back worse than him. Miles Sanders. Yes. Oh, is it really? You little <laughs> sniper. Yes. Nailed it. So uh, Madison, just a tough player to trust because he's been so inefficient, even with these opportunities. Uh, you tease so, us earlier. By the way, two running backs that got paid in the offseason? Yeah, don't pay running Second backs. Second cut, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe, not, maybe not early picks. David Montgomery maybe. worked out. Yeah, I, well, he's missed multiple. He's Twice he's gotten injured and missed time, too. I, know, I mean, still, he's been pretty he's, good. He's, he's been, yeah, he's yeah. been good, yeah. Uh, let's talk about players. Uh, let's talk about Zay Jones, who you mentioned earlier in the show, Mike, uh, because he is obviously now the number two wide receiver mm-hmm. for the Jaguars. What does that mean for fantasy? Like, does that mean that he takes over the kind of value that Christian Kirk had prior to the injury? I think had Trevor Lawrence been playing this week and this was a neutral matchup, we'd be talking about Zay Jones as wide receiver three, yep. uh, probably at worst, because remember last season he had 95 catches, 980 Unreal. yards and six touchdowns. He was 17th in catches at receiver last year, 10th in end zone targets. 31st in fantasy points per game. This was a guy that we were comfortably starting throughout most of last season, a really nice breakout year. And in this scenario, there'd be no Christian Kirk. It'd be Ridley and Jones and Ingram as the primary pass catchers in uh, this offense. However, there's no Trevor Lawrence and they're playing the Cleveland Browns. Browns. I'm glad the second few is fantasy points to receivers. 39th on my board, 12 team leagues. You consider him a flex option, uh, but not, not a lineup lock yet. But again, if, if Kirk misses some time and Lawrence is back next week, Maybe then we're talking about him as a, as a starter. All right. So next up, I, I don't have anything to add because I see it the exact same way that you do. Mm-hmm. I am nervous. It's crazy. Like the Browns are quote unquote slumping a bit of late in the secondary. And they're still, as you said, second fewest fantasy points allowed to opposing so, wide receivers. So are the Jets. The Jets have uh, right. had shown some cracks the past few weeks as well. And still they're They actually flip flopped the Browns passed them for like fewest fantasy points allowed for one week. And then the Jets took it back this past week. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so they're just. Yeah. It, it happens. It's it's almost impossible to play a plus ball on at any position for 18 straight weeks. Sure. Totally. It's just, it's just impossible. So not too far so behind both of those defenses, the Ravens who have been awesome for much of this mm-hmm. season, sure despite have. some injuries and despite, despite like, frankly, like some personnel concerns coming into the season on the defensive side of the ball, I would say probably most specifically at edge rusher. And that leads us to Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, who draw those Ravens on Sunday in Baltimore, 1 p.m. kickoff time. So an early game for the Rams. Uh, Puka Nakua, Mike, I think is a different conversation than Cooper Cup, right? Like maybe he's downgraded in terms of his rank. This week I have him as wide receiver 17. Yep. He is dealing with that AC joint sprain, but he sounds like he's going to play. Sean McVay said that's the expectation for Sunday. He's got seven plus targets in every game this season. Sure does. He's been unbelievable. Like, did you watch him last week? Of course you did. He was yeah. amazing against that Browns defense. Like, this is, and we need to reinforce this more and more and more and more and more, right? This is the DK Metcalf, Jamar Chase thing from this past week. I get it. Puka Nakua still got more to prove before he can say that he's on that same level of players. But for fantasy, he's been every bit that level of player as those two guys this season. You're playing Puka Nakua and you are expecting anything, right? You could have 25 points this week and it wouldn't surprise you. Puka Nakua, DK Metcalf, Jamar Chase. Who has more fantasy points this year? Who's uh, the Puka, most? Puka, by a Puka lot. Nakua, by a lot. By yeah. a lot so, yes. I mean, you're not uh, too far off and it's not like he did it all in the first month without a cup and then has disappeared. I yep. mean, it's been up and down for this offense. Of course, one of those games Stafford was out, but he's had two big games in the last three weeks. Yep. So yeah, I'm with you. Good volume. Good. Obviously a really good player. Good connection with Matthew Stafford. It is a tough matchup. There's more bust potential than usual with them traveling all the way into Baltimore to play this defense. It would not shock me if they scored nine points in this game at all, yep. but you're starting Puka Nakua. He's just been too good. Target share is too good. So uh, do you want the good or the bad for Cooper Cup? I want uh, only only positive vibes. Okay. Just leave the bat out, right? We'll do our best. I mean, I need him in the Morham League in a significant way this <laughs> yeah. weekend. So he's got a 25.5% target share since returning in week five. That's sure good. Does. That's right? really good. That's really a really good, good number. Yeah. Um, he found the end zone last week. Sure did. He Second had time this year. Last week. That's good. Kind of it. Yeah. And it feels like you feel lucky to get that, right? Yeah, totally. Like that might be a ceiling. Yeah. What do you think the longest streak in Cooper Cup's career prior to this season 
of going consecutive games with 50 or fewer receiving yards was. The longest streak? Yep. Man, I'm, well, are we counting like right when he started I'm out? I'm talking there? right from jump. Wow, really? Yeah. Um, four. Three. He's and now he's done it six. six in a row. Wow, six. that's, yeah. that's hard to believe. as yeah. long as any other streak in his career. And I get it. Cooper Cup has been a very, very good player for a long time. But as you said, like, not every guy from the first week of their career goes Puka Nakua style and just yeah. crushes it, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's just the lack of big plays is alarming right now. And I talked about this on Monday with you and Daniel is that, like, the layups for Cooper Cup aren't there, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, there are certain players that you watch. And I feel like this was like um, Tom Brady to Julian Edelman forever, Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes it's not gone, but like, you know, it was probably at its apex over the past few years. So it was just like Travis Kelsey would just like run like a little hook route, find the soft spot in the zone. It was like zip it 12 yards, first down, right? Tom Brady, Julian Edelman, zip it, whatever. Return route, 12 yards, first down. Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup for a year and a half. Little out route, first down. This year, not there. Yeah, it's not. And I will say this too. Uh, when he came back, we thought is the emergence of Nakua going to take away from Cooper Cup. And that has also happened here, too. You said 25% target share. I mean, last year it was like 33, 34, yep. 35%. I mean, that's a good two, three targets a game uh, that he's losing. So yeah, that's Nikola's another thing. 28% that's of Cooper Turner. Yeah, that's Cooper right. Turner, I mean, yeah. he they're they're still going toe-to-toe target-wise. Now, Tuto Atwell not, as, not only has disappeared, he's like running fourth in line some weeks. Demarcus Robinson's kind of come along yeah, of there. Of course, why not, right? Yeah, they're working other guys in. Atwell kind of quietly is kind of being phased out a little bit uh, for whatever reason. Um, Tyler Higby's target share is down, but uh, there's no doubt that Nakua has has cost him some targets on top of everything else. So, look, I'm with you. He's 28th. They're also playing the Ravens, fourth fewest fantasy points, the lowest yards per target to receivers as well as if efficiency for cup isn't enough of a problem. So uh, definitely some concerns here, but when you are seeing a 25% target share volume at the end of the day, volume is King. You know, you said there, you said there's volume and there's skill, you know, volume is in a lot of ways, a skill stat too, right? Fair. There's a reason yep. you get that. Not so a lot of bad um, players, get a lot of targets, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Generally, unless, unless we're at the extreme, right. And the team's really struggling. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll chase the volume to an extent and call him a fringe wide receiver three, but you're right. Uh, definitely, definite bust potential. Here. Can I be vulnerable here for a second? Please do. So it's a safe place. This, yeah. So in the war room league, everything is telling me from a logical standpoint that like I should be rolling with Patrick Mahomes, my quarterback one and not playing Matthew Stafford against the Ravens. Meanwhile, I should be, you know, like, even though Cooper Cup has a bad matchup, it's like, hey, you know, like, he's still Cooper Cup, 25.5% target share. That's pretty reasonable. You can't play. I've got on my bench, you know, Jerry Judy, probably my next man up. Mm. Can't do that. And part of me is like, dang, do I just, like, part of me is like, do I just play Stafford over Cup, over Mahomes and Judy over Cup? Like, these no. are not things I should be thinking <laughs> right now. Well, I mean, right? the Stafford one feels e- like an easy no. I mean, I know, I know yeah, but I'm like, Stafford should at I Baltimore. Be, right? I know. No, but I, I mean, if you're in a situation where you're like Rasheed Rice or Cooper Cup, like, no, I get yeah, that then you're going yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I think Cooper yeah. Cup is wide receiver 30. I hear, no, I hear you. Dirty. And, I hear you, though, because they're like Cup going into Baltimore super intimidating. You're like, Judy, maybe he catches a 52 yard touchdown. Like, you know, is or, Cup going to do that? Probably not. But like yeah. with Judy, it's like maybe he also has like three catches on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of need uh, the the Rams just to be trailing. Yeah. And Baltimore is in, you know, a deep shell and just kind of playing conservative and cup underneath just soaks up a bunch of late game targets. You I know? was going to say, and Sean McVay is not afraid as we have seen throughout the year to put up meaningless yards in games. Like if they're down 31, 17 with a minute and a half mm-hmm. to go, he's still going to be gunning for that touchdown there. No doubt. No doubt. All right, let's it. move on to the uh, Texans wide receivers. Mike, just an update uh, because of the fact that we now know the tank Dell's out for the season, right? Nico Collins and Noah Brown, Nico Collins catapulting up rankings here, Mike. And what's interesting, what's cool about Nico Collins is that like, it's not cool that tank Dell got hurt, but this is not merely a tank Dell is hurt. All of a sudden, Nico Collins is a top 15 wide receiver. Mm -mm. I've got him as wide receiver 14 right now, Mike. And over the past three weeks amongst all NFL wide receivers, fourth in targets, third in receptions, second in receiving yards and sixth in target share. This is a real deal role. The only reason why Nico Collins is not ranked inside the top 10 this week is the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 Jets. Yep, primarily a perimeter receiver, so he's going to see a lot of Sauce Gardner yep. and DJ Reed in this game. It is a very tough matchup. I'm with you. It's uh, It feels weird to not have him in the top 10. He should be certified top 10 player. He's been delivering basically that all year with yeah. Tank Dell right. having a, making a big impact. So 
Uh, yeah, you, you said it perfectly. I mean, this guy will probably rank higher in easier matchups going forward, but this week it's a challenge. How on earth did Noah Brown play 81% of the snaps last week and have two targets for zero catches? Because he's just in that class with Terry McLaurin and Hollywood Brown and Chris Godwin of, you know, these superstars that went without a catch last week. That was a theme last week, actually. All three of those guys had combined for zero catches. That's like, you know, there's someone out there that had those three guys. A hundred percent there was. Godwin, Brown, and McLaurin. And got now, zero Godwin catches. did have a, uh, a rushing touchdown. So perhaps yeah, you yeah. can, like as a fantasy manager, cope with that a little bit more. In the Scott Fishbowl, which I get it, there's a million different variables that go into it. But I was in the, you know, trying to advance through round two of the playoffs. And in Scott Fishbowl, you get uh, tight end premium scoring. So mm-hmm. it's always good to have a useful tight end. Injuries have decimated me there. So I played Juwan Johnson. Oh, and Terry McLaurin. Another one. Oh, oh no. So I, I would say, fortunately, like yeah. the squad is in a pretty good spot where I was able to push through. But still, like I was uh, go, uh, going into the Sunday night game, I, I needed some help. I had a lot of guys left, but still, I needed help. And I was like, damn, like fantasy football, why do we do this to ourselves? Yeah. But yeah, I, Jawan, talk, I mean, we thought that was a clear cut tight end one. Smash week. Bond, I mean, they yeah. had to use them. Yeah. Crazy. Nothing. What would you do? I mean, we're, so we're going to uh, come back in a moment and discuss bounce back players, some massive, massive names here, Mike. What would you do if you were Terry McLaurin right now? You know, he, he's I don't such know. Like I mean, Terry what's McLaurin, his contract situation? Uh, he you know, he signed that big extension, yeah. not this past summer, but the year prior. Terry McLaurin, and I, I say this not with hyperbole, might have as much integrity as any player in the NFL. Like, yeah. one of the most respected humans in the entire league, mm-hmm. even though he's in year five of his career. I know that he's too good of a dude to do something disruptive. Yeah. But if I'm him... I'm pissed right now. Yeah, I don't understand it, too. I mean, to be number one in pass attempts in the league. Imagine if I told you that coming into the year. They'd be number one in the pass attempts. We'd be, right, we'd be, be like, drafting him like 11th at receiver yeah. or something. Like We would have moved him up 10 spots. Not a talent issue, right? Yeah, He's if we knew how it was going to do this. Yeah. Uh, it does not check. Like, I don't. It's almost hard to do the math and figure out how they could be first in pass attempts and, like, second in passing yards. And, like, Terry McLaurin is disappointing. Like, he's just not. Good, like and, not and, a good fantasy on top of that, player. Mike, it's like it's not even like um, there was some. Emer- it's not like Jahan Dotson has become the seventh best wide right, receiver in right. fantasy, I'm and McLaurin you. just kind of like got unlucky because it's been the Jahan Dotson show. No, like um, like the year that Juju Smith Schuster broke out and actually won the Steelers MVP award. Antonio Brown was still great, but it was like kind of the out of nowhere emergency. Yeah, yeah. Like wow, like that might cost a beach just, just a touch, right? But this is just a, this is just a, what's that? This is a lifetime ago, by the way. I know, right? Yeah. But this is like an Eric B enemy, Kansas city chief situation where they're like, we have to get Diami Brown worked in and we have to get Jamison Crowder, some targets and Curtis Samuels had a bounce back year. And Brian Robinson has a bunch of long catches and you know, it's just Logan Thomas. I'd be ticked. They're just spreading it around instead of featuring that. And, I, so I, like, I week, it, it's out, like, weird though. It's like, is it working? Cause like offense hasn't really been their problem necessarily. They're taking nah, a lot of sacks, but hard to say. Yeah. It's like walking that line of, you know, we, we have that issue with the Falcons. Like if it was working, like right. what are we going to say? Like, yeah. yeah, they're not using Drake London or Kyle Pitts or anything, but oh, it's they're scoring Atlanta points and winning place. games. Well, it's not, it's not there. No, it's working for them in their minds. They're in first place, Mike. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. They're, they're going to win the Super Bowl, right? Host, Super Bowl favorites. MVPs they're preparing and, to host maybe your Eagles in the first round of the playoffs. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't want to hear about that, but you're right. That's big, big two weeks here for the Philly. It is. All right, we're going to go back in just a moment here and discuss some bounce back candidates and whether they will bounce back. And these are big names. But first, home, auto, prize, sports memorabilia, whatever you need to protect, Geico can help get you covered. And with the award-winning Geico mobile app, you can get 24-7 claim support and on-the-go policy access. It's easy to Geico. Go to geico.com today. Mm, smell that field sure do. that's the scent of fresh turf and freshly cracked dr pepper mm. which can only mean one thing it's college football season it's actually almost college football bowl season yeah, so block is. off your saturdays and swipe a sweet dr pepper from the mini fridge because there's a new season of high kicks long throws and fansville commercial breaks to carry you all the way to the west coast games that's right the fans are back and this year things are heating up we're talking more hot takes more heartbreak more layers of face paint. Get ready to drink in all the drama this season with the help of the most delicious college football tradition there is, Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. All right, Mike, we are back here now on Fantasy Focus Field sure. and Mike hanging out and it's December, Mike. Yeah. We need it to be a December to remember. 
and we need our fantasy football stars to play like stars. We sure do. Because some of these guys uh, didn't do that this past week. And they did look, not. Teams are, it's a season of frustration. Some of us have like teams that are around 500. We need to sneak in the playoffs. We can't have weeks like this. We do. Like uh, I've got a, uh, a two quarterback league where I drafted uh, the first year was the year after Jalen Hurts took over as the starter in Philly. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, he certainly had shown some things, but was not like a fully formed version of what mm-hmm. he is now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won the draft lottery. I got the first pick. I took Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I think the second or third round, maybe the fourth round. I can't recall. But I took Jalen Hurts. And I'm like, wow, I've got the nucleus for a star team going forward. I still feel that way about Jalen Hurts. Don't know if I should feel that way right now about Patrick Mahomes, Mike. Yeah, I think uh, long term, you feel great, still feel great about it, of course. Uh, I agree for the rest of the season here in the stretch run. Um, It's just not happening. I mean, it seems like maybe they have found something here with Rasheed Rice, and they're going to continue to feature him. I hope so. I swear, if he goes back to four targets this week and plays 60 or 55% of the snaps, I'm going to be furious. But uh, he seems to be working the last couple of weeks. Travis Kelsey hasn't really turned it on yep. uh, as of late, but it is working pretty well for Rasheed Rice. So maybe there's hope going forward. But look, only- for a thought. What's that? Yeah, for a thought. This is just a stupid, probably harebrained thought, but we need the Chiefs to have crappy games every other week to wake them up for the following week. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs playing against the Eagles. Monday night football, Mm -hmm. Super Bowl rematch, up early in the game, looking like this is going to be easy. They end up losing the game Mm 21-17 against an Eagles team that has been unable to stop a lot of elite quarterbacks. Wakes them up a little bit. They stumble out of the gates at the beginning of the Raiders game, and then, bam, Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes goes on to win AFC Player of the Week with his excellent, excellent offensive performance. Last week, kind of regressed back to a sort of a sleepy Sunday night performance at Lambeau Field, but with the Bills game in the backdrop. If the Chiefs aren't pissed off going into this game this weekend, then we can write off the possibility of the Chiefs being the number one seed because it ain't going to happen. And it might mean the Chiefs are not playing in the Super Bowl, which feels like a borderline fait accompli most years right now because yeah. of how good Patrick Mahomes is. This better be a game because they ain't winning this game on Sunday by grinding it out 17 to 14. Nope. Buffalo's too good on offense. They're just too damn good. Yeah, this is uh, a super intriguing game and one I had a hard time picking because I have it projection wise, I have it as a toss up. Wow. Like and like Buffalo has to win this game. They I mean, must. they're going to miss the playoffs if they keep losing games. They're six uh, and, and the six Chiefs, with the Chiefs and the Cowboys over the next two weeks. Yeah, if the they Ch- don't split at, yeah. at best, I mean, at mm-hmm. worst, they're screwed. And they're a team that just has to sneak in and they can make a run. Oh no, doubt. like they could legit miss if they don't start winning some of these games. But uh, the Chiefs, on the other hand, are you know if this game is uh, in Kansas City and. They're, you know, like you said, they're coming off a loss. You'd expect a bounce back game. Andy you know, Reid's yeah. always famous for that bouncing back. So this is a tough game to figure out for sure. Uh, but you're right. We, need, we want 35-32. We need, we we need, need some offense. We need uh, and by the yeah. way, Buffalo's defense is such that it can happen. Oh, and yeah. The Chiefs, oh, yeah. And the, and the Chiefs defense, while very good, the Bills offense, I, people get mad right now. I think the Bills offense at full strength when playing its best as is good is any other than San Francisco. I agree 100%. Okay. I mean, yeah, but I, I, who's the number one scoring fantasy quarterback this year? By a lot, Josh Allen. Yeah, and how do you get there? You by piling Lots up a ton of touchdowns, touchdowns and yards. Yes. I mean, yes. yeah, their their offense is as scary as as any in the league for okay. sure. Okay. So, that, that really wasn't that hot of a take. So, the point is, if we get elite Bills offense, they can handle any defense in the NFL. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. who they're playing. Mm-hmm. And they can score 35 on you. Yeah. We need that to happen on Sunday, and we need Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense to respond. Yeah, we want one of them toe-to-toe games where yep. both teams are scoring. At, we haven't seen as many of them this year. It's been I've really got, disappointing. They've quarterback come out, eight. What? I've got yeah. Mahomes quarterback eight. Yeah, I'm at, uh, I'm at six. I'm a little higher for that reason, which is like Kansas City is already an extremely pass-heavy offense. And again, this should be a close game. Usually they're favored. Yeah. This one, it's you know by a lot. This one's a close game, so we expect even more passing from Mahomes, which uh, helps his fantasy appeal a little bit. We've got five players to get to. We're going to get to them. The NFL will never admit this, but we can admit it as fans ourselves. Can you imagine the difference in the seventh seed in the AFC? If it's like Bills Ravens in round one of that two, seven game, as opposed to like Ravens Steelers. Mm -hmm. I get it. Those teams are bitter rivals. Yeah. But a Mitch Trubisky Steelers team 
that has been outgained in 10 of 11 games this year or 11 of 12 mm-hmm. games this year as opposed to the Buffalo Bills going to Baltimore in round one. You think uh, the NFL would never admit it, but would probably feel like they prefer the latter? I think so, right? Yeah, I think we have. Well, we all would. I know we're being honest here. Yeah, (laughs) we we all would. Uh, How about the Chiefs getting pulled from uh, Monday night next week, though? You know, the Chiefs were not pulled from Monday night. The Patriots were pulled. Well, I know that, but I'm saying, but still, like that. I mean, look, if the Chiefs were still lighting it up through the air, it might be. They might have a second guess on putting Seattle and Philly in over them. But That's fair. See, the the Chiefs are just not an exciting offense right now. Well, I, I think I think it's really a Patriots thing, Mike. I, I, I mean, also, it's it's mostly a Patriots yeah. thing. But and still. by the way, the Patriots, primetime tomorrow night, and they play primetime not next week because that was the game they were mm-hmm. pulled from Monday Night Football, but the following week again. Yeah. Christmas Eve, Patriots, Denver. I believe that game is not flexible. Like, they can't move mm-hmm. it. So I think the, the, the NFL probably was like, eh, Back to back to weeks with Bailey Zip and Zappy? Probably not what the customers want. Nope. Uh, Zappy and the Patriots played the uh, Chargers this past weekend, and Justin Herbert was not good. However, Mike, I think that was mostly due to the fact that uh, the rain was awful, and Patriots defense is very good right now. I've got him right back in my top six for quarterbacks this week. Yeah, the Patriots have allowed one weekly quarterback finish better than ninth this season. That's absurd. Nine of the quarter, nine of the twelve they face have been outside the top fifteen. So That's part nice. of that again is because they cannot score, and teams do not have to throw on them, yep. and that. You know, late game, throwing the ball a ton two, after the two minute warning stuff really piles up. Uh, teams haven't had to do that against the Patriots. And that could be the case, uh, or that was the case for Herbert in this one. Still at 278 yards in tough conditions. He played fine. Uh, or, or, or no, maybe that 278 is a projection for this week, but yep. nonetheless, uh, was fine. Has yep. eight top 10 fantasy weeks. That's third most this season. They're playing Denver this week. That was 212 uh, last week for uh, 212. No right. touchdowns, obviously. In, that, in them Herbert. circumstances, though, that he had one of the better stat lines in that game yep. out of all players. So, totally. yep. uh, not worried about it at all. QB7 against Denver. Not worried there. You and I disagree, and it's time for a board bet. Austin Eckler, who Here was it is. terrible this yep. past week, 14 carries for 18 yards, plus two catches for a total of nine yards. Again, bad condition. Those apply the running back as well. Patriots run defense to terrific especially against opposing running mm-hmm. backs specifically and they put the broncos it's the matchup of all matchups here mike and i have him as running back 13 nine spots lower than you uh-huh. this might be the most anticipated board bet of the season yeah i scanned the note i scanned the note and uh i was like this is the only one where we're not close yep. and it's not close at all for a player like austin eckler so uh we, we talked through it earlier this week um i just want to add to the pile of the things i said that uh, he's only played nine games so far. He's 11th in expected touchdowns. So he's had opportunities near the goal line. He's 10th in receiving yards because he's second best in yards after the catch yeah. uh, running back. So he's still been really effective uh, in the passing. You know, the rushing efficiency hasn't been there. Uh, and and again, for me, I'm buying on still the heavy volume that he's been getting. Still going to get 16, 17, 18 touches, something like that. Yeah. Effective in the passing game, we know that. Still getting a lot of volume. And, of course, the matchup against Denver. They have been better as of late, but they're still... If you just throw away the Miami game, 5.1 yards per carry to running backs, which is still very, very poor. However, right now, Austin Eckler is currently on a 28 straight carry streak of six yards or fewer. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the second longest in the NFL this season by any player. Yep. It's been a rough patch. Care to venture the guess of who has the only streak longer than that? Miles Sanders. (laughs) Austin Eckler. What? Eckler earlier in the year. No no way. 48 straight carries. I mean, they can't run the ball. Do you remember when we were, you remember how furious you were at Josh Kelly earlier this year? Yes. Maybe it wasn't his fault. I mean, there's something to be said for that, that they can't run the ball. Uh, I'm just, I'm just bound, you know, I'm, Betting on the volume. I mean, he's still a talented player. He's getting older. He's still a talented player. I'm betting on the 12 to 14 carries, hopefully six or seven targets, hopefully yeah. uh, in a pretty good matchup. And he gets the job done again. Remember, he did have three straight top six fantasy weeks I before mean, this three him. games. Trust me, I try. We're all invested in Austin Eckler. Yeah. We need this. All right. So I'll be generous, though. So four to 13 is a nine spot difference. Technically, it'd be eight and a half. We'd say top yeah, eight. I want to say top for 10. the record, though, your odds, the odds of him being outside like, I'm going to top 10, top 12. What? I'm being generous. Top 12 I'm giving you. Top 12? Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So right, I, that's better. You know, obviously the odds are, are, are improved. They're still probably, you know, just in they general. They definitely lean toward you. Yeah. Uh, it's just one of them things. But uh, but I'll take it because yeah, I believe in Austin Eckler. Yeah. And I don't. So go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go first. All right. I say Austin Eckler will be a top 12 finishing fantasy quarterback in week 14. Running back, but same thing. I'd say Austin Eckler will not be a top 12 finishing running back in week 14. 
Put it on the board. board. What I did I say? Wait for that. You said quarterback. Yeah, quarterback. <laughs> he probably won't be a top 12 scoring if throws, quarterback. Uh, yeah. If he throws two touchdowns, he'll so say good. that'd be the take of the century for sure. All right. So Mike, of course, from central Pennsylvania, huge Eagles fan uh, and so bright about the Eagles in general. Yep. Uh, were you the person that was spotted outside their facility this morning saying run the damn ball more? Absolutely Did not. Did you see that guy though? No, I, I missed it. There was someone outside the facility this morning saying That's run the so ball. Dumb. Come on. Okay. Know well, people about. want the Eagles to run the football a whole lot more. Are you buying into that, Mike? And if so, do you think that DeAndre Swift can bounce back? I, no. You you pass to set up the. I mean, look, you need to run the ball when the when a there's appropriate times to run the football. However, you don't just commit to the run. It however, makes no sense. Yeah. It makes no sense. And I, you know, I maybe the maybe the all time dumbest stat you see is like, well, this team is. 34 and three when they run the, when the running back yeah. gets 20 yeah, no, carries or that. something, it's game script, right? Teams of course. run the ball in the, in the fourth I quarter. I love the, that yeah. stat though. It's one of my favorites. It's, uh, it's the worst. It's the worst. Only Try. because it allows you to spot whether the person knows ball or not. That's exactly a good call. Yeah. Like it's the like the minute someone doesn't... uses that, you're like, okay, I can ignore future uh, observations. That's from right. person. Yeah, unfollowed. Yeah. Right. So yeah. um, not necessarily look, the Eagles have run more and, games earlier this season because the game script was positive and they and it was the same thing last year, right? Yeah. That's the part of why Miles Sanders had so much volume. So uh they just have to be smarter with their play calling. Um for sure. But the they did been, suggest they want to run the football more. They uh, they did. Uh, that's uh, I feel like everyone says that. Um but I, it's not just like let's just come out and run it on first and second down and throw it on third down. That's not a, necessarily a recipe for success. Um I forget where I was going with this. You sticking no. with DeAndre Swift or no? Yes. Um, RB20. I mean, okay. look, yeah. they're playing Dallas. Uh, I He had he, he matched his uh, season, I believe it was, in targets in this past game, or most since week six. His prior two games were still good, over 80 <laughs> yards in both of those games. And look, that, but Dallas is good. He only had 74 yards and 20 touches when they played a few weeks ago. So they did try to get him the ball in that game. 20 touches for him, and it didn't go so hot in that earlier matchup. Dallas just really good defensively, especially against running back. So DeAndre, I'm going to start him, but he's, he's trending down. Do you know what bit. he is, though? DeAndre Swift is the quintessential fantasy player where the role is not so obviously good that you have to play the player, right? But I mean, the, it, it's been pretty, it's, he's been solid. Okay. I mean, he's had, what was it, like 15 plus touches in like every game okay, going back to not, week two? It's not so obviously good that you have to play, him, right? Like reasonable minds are going to say, I don't want to play DeAndre Swift. But it's also good enough. And the hypothetical playing in this offense is high enough that you're like, yeah, it's tough to sit him still, mm. right? He fits into that sort of like purgatory mm. role where it's mm. like, yeah, I, I think I'll probably end up playing him, but I'm weary of another performance like last week. I've got him in some top 20 as well for running backs. Uh, we'll wrap up here with two receivers. Adam Thielen, back-to-back weeks with six or fewer targets, Mike. He ran a total of 65 routes over the past two weeks. That's yeah. his lowest he has uh, two of his three lowest games or the total routes run have happened over the past two weeks. You know what? This is tough because last week, what did I say? I said they're playing Tampa Bay. He was really bad against the slot. Yep. It's a great matchup for him. And he disappointed happen, this yeah. week. The analysis is they're playing the saints really dominant against the perimeter. Second few is fantasy points allowed, but the ninth most of the slot, the advantage, uh, the, the plus matchup is for Thielen in the slot in this one where he lines up 73% of the time. And by the way, it's seven for 54 and a touchdown against the saints when they played uh, back. That was week two. So that's when he really started his heater yep. uh, and he went on to have uh seven games with 15 plus fantasy points. So I'm going to stick with him. I from 27th. He's startable, but uh, yeah, I'm a little nervous after a couple duds here. Last one, Drake London play the Jets this past week. Very bad matchup. Now plays Tampa. Very good matchup here. Mike, you went on Drake London this week. Nope. 40th. Uh, and this yeah. is a good matchup. Fifth, most fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, but he only had six for 54 against him a few weeks ago when they played or that was week seven. So a couple months ago, but uh, it's just not happening. Too many down games. His best, or three top twenty fives. One better than nineteenth. They're just not. Did he play much in the slot again last week or no? No, he went back to the perimeter. They they did moved him in for two weeks to the slot, and then they moved him back outside in like the at the worst time. And, and but did you see what they did last week? They just tried to throw Yolo balls to him. His air yards per target last week nineteen and a half. That's the highest in the game. I'll for take a career. that for yeah. fantasy. Like at least ho- let's hit one once in a while, right, and right. maybe we'll be all right in fantasy. But uh, just complete disappointment disappointing use of assets in that offense. Yeah. I got to be honest with the people out there that are hoping that maybe things change this off season. Atlanta once again has played itself out of the high end quarterback prospect territory. Mm-hmm. They have a real shot at making the playoffs having like the 21st pick in the draft. They're going to keep their coach. Go back with Desmond Ritter. Convince yourself on that one once more. 
Yeah, I don't know if they'll like maybe go after like a veteran. I don't want to say Ryan Tannehill, but that's sort of like veteran quarterback. Right. Uh, but I would hope. I mean, look, he already got benched, so they have to try to aim higher. Sure. There's no yeah, doubt. I would think it. so. I would. Uh, and I don't I know who it's going to be, but you have to try. I would think that if they make the playoffs or miss the playoffs in large part because they sputter to the finish offensively, there will be directives from above. Let's go get ourselves a quarterback. Can we please get a have quarterback? To. We shall mm-hmm. see for the Atlanta Falcons. That was fun. Yeah, always is. Uh, Mike is taking the day off tomorrow because he doesn't like to work. Just kidding. Mike is back on Friday. Bet Playbook Day. Thursday show. Yeah, big day tomorrow for Mike and the Bet Playbook. Uh, Daniel Dot may be back tomorrow. Otherwise, Tyler Fulgham in the house once more. We will start our week 14 preview. Where has the time gone? Week 14, just one month from tomorrow, the NFL regular season will be coming to a close. For Mike, I'm Field. We'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. See you then.